Hi, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and Lesson 12 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam. In this lesson, we cover the T3C questions, which pretty much go over propagation modes. The questions in the T3C section go over line of sight, sporadic E, meteor, aurora scatter, tropospheric ducting, F layer skip, and the radio horizon. All right, you ready? Let's get going. Wired direct, not via repeater, UHF signals rarely heard from stations outside your local coverage area. Well, the answer is UHF signals are usually not reflected by the ionosphere. They have a small wavelength, and it just it is not easily done. Remember that radio waves can bounce off stuff, and the atmosphere is one of those things they can bounce off of. However, UHF has a hard time with the atmosphere part. Um, unless you're working through a repeater, generally on UHF, what you see is what you get on coverage area. Which of the following might be happening when VHF signals are being received from long distances? Now the answer is signals are being refracted from a sporadic E layer. And I'm not too sure if refracted or reflected is the best word, but the sporadic E are pockets of ionized gas in the E layer of the ionosphere. And what happens is that the VHF signals hit these and um, are bent or reflected back towards the Earth, which causes an increased uh, reception distance. So just remember, sporadic E. What is the characteristic of VHF signals received via auroral reflection? Now the signals exhibit rapid fluctuations of strength and often sound distorted. And yes, you can bounce signals off of the northern lights. Now if, if you know how the northern lights look wavy and kind of like a curtain, that's because they are. The, that charged curtain does funny things to the signal, the way it reflects back to the, to the earth. Um, if, you, if you imagine talking into a slow-moving fan, it's kind of like that. Well, that reflection is received in your radio, and it causes fluctuations and strength changes and distorted sound sometimes. Which of the following propagation types is most commonly associated with occasional strong over-the-horizon signals on the 10, 6, and 2-meter bands? And this is sporadic E layer again. Just remember, sporadic D, sporadic E are, are ionized pockets of gas that refract radio signals um, when, they, when radio signals hit them, and they're effective on 10, 6, and 2 meter bands especially. Which of the following effects might cause radio signals to be heard despite obstructions between the transmitting and receiving stations? Now the answer sounds kind of pretty cool. It's called knife edge diffraction. And this happens when signals are partially refracted around solid objects exhibiting sharp edges. And this especially happens in urban envi environments where you have buildings and other types of things with sharp corners. So your signal needs to have a good amount of power and at least a little bit more than usual. And you need to be just at the right angle, but you can shoot a UHF or VHF signal around objects um, in an urban environment. So of the which of the following effects might cause radio signals to be heard despite obstructions between the transmitting and receiving stations? Knife edge ref diffraction. What mode is responsible for allowing over the horizon VHF and UHF communications to ranges of approximately 300 miles on a regular basis? Now the answer to this one is tropospheric scatter. Now tropospheric scatter is caused by turbulence or density changes, so a high pressure pocket of the troposphere about six miles up. These changes in the atmosphere's density can reflect VHF and UHF signals up to 500 miles away. So just remember, trop tropospheric scatter will scatter VHF and UHF frequencies up to 300 miles away. What band is best suited to communicating via meteor scatter? Well, you can scatter, you can bounce signals off of uh, meteor showers as well. Six meters is the one best suited for meteor scatter. All right, so when meteors enter the atmosphere, they leave this ionized gas trail behind them. You can reflect VHF signals off these pretty well. However, six meters is the best for meteor scatter. What causes tropospheric ducting? All right, the answer is temperature inversions in the atmosphere. And the, there are certain weather conditions in the troposphere, especially over high pressure areas, that can make it possible for VHF and higher frequency to travel extremely long distances, even over 1,000 miles. And the way you need to kind of picture this is imagine two layers of cold air that are sandwiching a layer of warm air and your VHF signal hits that duct of warm air and just basically bounces around it can go for up to a thousand miles. These temperature inversions usually occur between 500 meters and three kilometers above the Earth's surface and allow for tropospheric ducting. So the answer to the question is temperature inversions in the atmosphere. 
What is generally the best time for long distance 10 meter band propagation via the F layer? The answer is from dawn to shortly after sunset during periods of high sunspot activity. All right, so the sunlight during the day will charge the ionosphere. And when you throw sunspots into the mix, you're going to have a very, very highly charged ionosphere. And 10 meters is one of those bands that will reflect very well off a highly charged ionosphere. So a lot of 10 meter activity will occur in periods during the daytime when there's a lot of sunspot activity because 10 meter signals are bouncing off the ionosphere like crazy. So the best time to use 10 meters is during the day during periods of high sunspot activity. So what is generally the best time for long distance 10 meter band propagation via the F layer? From dawn to shortly after sunset during periods of high sunspot activity. What is the radio horizon? All right, the radio horizon is the distance over which two stations can communicate by direct path. And it's important to know that the radio horizon and the actual horizon are two different things. And VHF and UHF signals especially have a tendency to bend with the earth a little bit, which allows them to travel a little bit farther than the actual line of sight or the actual visual horizon. And this gives direct path. So direct path is communication between two stations that does not bounce off the ionosphere. It's essentially line of sight. So what is the radio horizon? It's the distance over which two stations can communicate by direct path. Why do VHF and UHF radio signals usually travel somewhat farther than the visual line of sight distance between two stations? Now this is the same idea as the last question. The bottom line is the Earth seems less curved to radio waves than to light. And that's the answer on the exam. And the reason for that is, is that VHF and UHF signals bend slightly towards the Earth, which allows them to travel a little bit farther than the visual line of sight. Which of the following bands may provide long distance communications during the peak of the sunspot cycle? The answer is 6 or 10 meters. Now, what this question is kind of implying is to get long distance communications during the sunspot cycle is essentially what bands are going to skip off the ionosphere during the daytime. The other answers in the question, are, or the other possible answers, are all UHF bands and they don't skip. So as long as you know that 6 and 10 meters will skip off a highly charged ionosphere, you should be able to give this answer correct, no problem. And it's good to know also that during periods of high sunspot activity, 6 and 10 meter bands are great at getting long distance communication. You'd be kind of surprised what you can get on a, a, a small antenna for 6 or 10 meters. But which of the following bands may provide long distance communications during the peak of the sunspot cycle? 6 or 10 meters. And that's it for the T3C review, and now it's time for the quiz. So take out your pencil and paper, number 1 through 12. I'm going to go through the questions quick. Pause the video if you need more time. Um, once you're done, go to the hamwhisper.com and check your answers under the exam answers page under the T3C link. And with that said, get ready and let's start the quiz. Question one. Why are direct, not via repeater, UHF signals rarely heard from stations outside your local coverage area? A, they are too weak to go very far. B, FCC regulations prohibit them from going more than 50 miles. C, UHF signals are usually not reflected by the ionosphere. And D, they collide with trees and shrubbery and fade out. Question two, which of the following might be happening when VHF signals are being received from long distances? A, signals are being reflected from outer space. B, signals are arriving by subsurface ducting. C, signals are being reflected by lightning storms in your area or D, signals are being refracted from a sporadic E layer. Question three, what is a characteristic of VHF signals received via auroral reflection? A, signals from distances of 10,000 or more miles are common. B, the signals exhibit rapid fluctuations of strength and often sound distorted. C, these types of signals occur only during winter nighttime hours. Or D, these types of signals are generally strongest when your antenna is aimed to the south for stations in the northern hemisphere. Question four, which of the following propagation types is most commonly associated with occasional strong over the horizon signals on the 10, six, and two meter bands? A, backscatter, B, sporadic E, C, D layer absorption, or D, gray line propagation? Question five, which of the following effects might cause radio signals to be heard despite obstructions between the transmitting and receiving stations? A, knife edge diffraction, B, Faraday rotation, C. Quantum tunneling 
or D, Doppler shift. Question six. What mode is responsible for allowing over the horizon VHF and UHF communications to ranges of approximately 300 miles on a regular basis? A, tropospheric scatter, B, D layer refraction, C, F2 layer refraction, or D, Faraday rotation? Question seven. What band is best suited to communicating via meteor scatter? A, 10 meters, B, six meters, C, two meters, or D, 70 centimeters? Question eight, what causes tropospheric ducting? A, discharges of lightning during electrical storms. B, sunspots and solar flares. C, updrafts from hurricanes and tornadoes. Or D, temperature inversions in the atmosphere. Question nine, what is generally the best time for long distance 10 meter band propagation via the F layer? A, from dawn to shortly after sunset during periods of high sunspot activity. B, from shortly after sunset to dawn during periods of high sunspot activity. C, from dawn to shortly after sunset during periods of low sunspot activity. Or D, from shortly after sunset to dawn during periods of low sunspot activity. Question 10. What is the radio horizon? A, the distance over which two stations can communicate by direct path. B, the distance from the ground to a horizontally mounted antenna. C, the farthest point you can see when standing at the base of your antenna tower, or D, the shortest distance between two points on the Earth's surface. And question 11, why do VHF and UHF radio signals usually travel somewhat farther than the visual line of sight distance between two stations? A, radio signals move somewhat faster than the speed of light. B, radio waves are not blocked by dust particles. C, the Earth seems less curved to radio waves than to light. Or D, radio waves are blocked by dust particles. And question 12, which of the following bands may provide long distance communication during the peak of the sunspot cycle? A, six or 10 meters, B, 23 centimeters, C, 70 centimeters or 1.25 meters, or D, all of these choices are correct. And that's it for the T3C lesson. And now that you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com, go to the exam answers page and hit the T3C link and get the answers to the quiz. And until next time in Lesson 13, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.